Hey guys, welcome back to the lab. Today at the bench, I'll be rebuilding this book's case and casing in the text block to finish this book. So this is uh, about a 1922 uh, case binding. And as you saw in the last episode, I got the text block ready to case in. So today I will be rebuilding the case and I have chosen a built-in groove structure for a couple of reasons. One, this book is small. It has a thin spine and smaller books tend to show a lack of precision in fit a little bit more. And so the built-in groove will let me uh, custom fit the boards back on this book as well as uh, custom fit the spine very specifically uh, to this book. So I am going to start by cutting a spine piece for the case. And this just gives the back of the spine a little structure and allows the case to kind of know where to open and close. So that's right on either side of that spine piece. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-crease these areas. And I'm also, you'll see me check the fit um, a bunch while I am rebuilding this cover. And the whole point is I'm making sure that everything uh, fits well in terms of the cover, um, all three parts of the cover, and then the cover to the text block itself. So part of this custom fit is I will actually take a pencil and mark where the front and back covers need to live on this spine piece. So normally if I'm rebuilding a book, you um, will often see me take a ruler or a straight edge and line up the two boards and the spine piece to make sure that everything opens um, very specifically and that basically is a uh, straight. In this case, um, because this is a landscape book, I want the boards to fit the way, like live on here the way that they need to live to create really good um, kind of turn in, even turn ins. And so that's why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back in the next day and check fit again. And now what I'm doing, this is a piece of toned long fibered paper that I have colored to match the same color as the case. And I am just going to stick it in place on the back of the spine um, just to hold it in a location for right now. Um, and then I will fit it um, for the next step. So just a word on rebacks. Normally you guys will see me do rebacks that are, you know, cloth or leather and their case bindings or not. I will try to go up under the original cover material. It looks tidier. This is an exception because this Starchfield cloth cover material is extremely thin and it's not in great shape. You know, it's got that water damage, that insect damage and the board underneath. These boards are actually really thin. And so any lumps or bumps up under due to lifting that original material will definitely show. And there's no design on the cover that needs to be retained. The covers are pretty plain. It's not like a uh, publisher's binding that's like really ornate up at the edge of the board and that needs to be retained. Um, that's not the case here. So I do want the edges of this material when the book is closed to line up with each other. That will look far more tidy than, than if they don't. And so that's why I'm kind of precisely fitting uh, where these edges are and then trimming them out. All right, so I've got that material laid down and I'm going to let that sit and dry as well. And the two um, 
pieces there are uh, Spunbound Poly Release Layer and uh, Blotter. All right, so I will come back the next day and pull the blotter and the release material. And then I have noticed um, that I have made a tiny boo-boo and the white kind of uh, built-in groove case rebuild material um, goes past the tone material so you would be able to see it. So I'll just pull that loose, uh, lift it a little. Uh, the good news about conservation is I tried to not do too many things or really anything that isn't reversible at some level structurally. And this is a fine example <laughs> of why that's important. All right, so now I'm just gonna trim the material, the tone material, so it matches the same width of the turn-ins. And then I'm going to adhere that down with a little PVA. And I have listed the tools and materials that I frequently use down in the description. Let me know if I'm missing anything and I'll be happy to add it. So now I'm going to come in and I am going to redefine that fold with my ruler and my Teflon folder to make sure that the case um, knows where it's supposed to open and close. I just like to define all the pivot points. Um, it helps with the casing in process if everything fits tidily and kind of sits where it wants to sit. And as you can see, that fits pretty well. And so now or casing in, um, I'll kind of take my time, make sure the text block is sitting where I want it to sit. All I do is I just set it down, open the cover, add a piece of waste paper, and then um, apply my adhesive, which is PVA. And the goal here is to not move the text block while I am gluing it out. So I then remove the waste paper and just close the book, make sure the text block doesn't shift around anywhere crazy. And then I do the same thing for the other side. And I have a piece of uh, that linen lining that pulled loose and I don't want it to show under my face down. So I pull it with tweezers. So then I close this cover and I insert, these are pieces of waxed paper. Um, some people use like silicone release paper. And then I take brass edge boards to define that shoulder area and that joint and just put it in the nipping press for a little bit, make sure there's no air bubbles and I have good contact. So then I come back and swap out the wax paper for a, like a regular paper. And that's how the book is going to sit overnight and that regular paper controls kind of the moisture from the PVA. All right, so that's sat overnight. And then I like to come in and flex the joints for my clients. And this ensures that the book opens properly and isn't gonna do anything weird. Um, sometimes the new material can be a little stiff. And so I like to go ahead and get everything operating the way it should. Uh, this client actually lives in Austin, Texas. And so I want to be sure before I ship it back to him that it is in great shape. And when he received it, he let me know that he was thrilled with the results, which is always my goal is happy clients. Okay, guys, this one is done. So be sure to subscribe to catch all the videos from the lab. Thanks.